Everybody, welcome to the Joker Box. Look, I'm going to do a video with my good friend Matt regarding the Joker film from 2019 with Mr. Phoenix. I have not seen the film. I do not have plans on seeing the film. And there's many reasons for that. I'm very honest and I'm going to be open with you guys. And from all the trailers and all the video clips and everything we've seen, to me, it just looks like meh. Now, this has nothing to do with Heath versus Phoenix. If The Dark Knight never existed, to be honest, I still probably wouldn't see this film. And reasons why are in the video you're about to see with my friend Matt and I. This was filmed the day before Matt saw the film. The day after, he brings up some good points. He did like it, but he still says it was meh. Um, a couple of my friends are crazy comic book fiends, a fiend, and um, graphic novelists, artists, DC level artists, um, just to give you a little background on them, they didn't really care for it too much. They said it would be possibly a rental. So I prefer the films to be dark, the look of uh, Tim Burton, Batman 1988, um, or The Crow, the first Crow film, as I mentioned in this interview, uh, review, movie review. How could you do a movie review if you don't see the film? I'm just letting you know why I don't want to see it. Okay, nothing against Phoenix and nothing against Joker fans. I, I have been asked, since I'm seen as an authority, just because I have a Joker channel, if I'm going to see it. And the answer is no. I may rent it, but... 50-50 on that. I just don't really have an interest. Spoiler alert, the Joker and you know, Arthur and uh, Bruce Wayne are possible brothers. That I found very interesting and very cool. Half of the things that happened in the movie didn't really happen in the movie. They were a figment of Arthur's imagination, the Joker's imagination. Like maybe he never got on the show um, as the Joker. It was all in his mind. The third thing that was brought up is the uh, black lady, his girlfriend in the film, the last time they are seen together, you know, they're seen in various places, like they obviously know each other, it, we're led to believe they're dating, but when he is sitting alone in her apartment, and she comes in, and she's like, like, who are you? Like, she doesn't even know him. She goes, are you the guy from down the hall? And he's like, yes. So how do you go from dating to being, are you the guy from down the hall? And she's nervous, and I believe she starts to freak out a little bit as if there's a stranger in her place. Like, what are you doing in here? Get out of here, you know? He's like, I'm sorry, I'll just leave. So that leads us to believe that all those other encounters with them were only in his mind. He is in Arkham Asylum, and he's in a room with a psychiatrist. Of course, they got to show the Waynes getting murdered in the alleyway because we've not seen that before. It's like, let's get creative. I mean, keep the same premise, but maybe just show a headline saying the Waynes have been murdered. We don't need to see the reenactment again. It's we all get it. We know. I can't stand when films just, they got to do the foreshadowing and they got to let you know what's going to happen. It's like they got to spoon feed us. Okay, whatever. But I think it should have ended like this. This would have been the total clincher on the film and instead of him killing the psychiatrist and leaving blood-stained footprints that was just weak i think she should have talked to him like i'm the psychiatrist and remember de niro is dead right the talk show host is dead because arthur the joker killed him what if he didn't what if again that was something in his imagination here's how i think the ending should have gone let's say the tv is playing in the background kind of blurred out so you're kind of hearing it in the, the psychiatrist at the end in Arkham with Arthur talking to him at the table, he starts laughing and she goes, what, what's so funny? Oh, you're, you're laughing at him? And then the TV comes into focus and it's De Niro saying, welcome everybody to the Blah show. I can't remember what it was. And then the announcer's like, live from New York, it's the Blah Blah show. I can't remember the name of the show. So you know he's still alive. And he keeps laughing. And then maybe he even says, you wouldn't get it. You wouldn't understand. And then you hear them say, we'll be back after this. 
And then maybe they cut to a newscast saying, the Waynes just contributed another $1.5 million to the benefit of the children's home downtown. So something happens where the Waynes are still alive. So, and, and then it cuts to the hall with the TV audio still playing about the Waynes. We do a slow back out down the whole hallway with the Joker laughing over the TV broadcast about the Wayne family and how much more money they just gave. So maybe the Waynes don't get killed for like another year. So all these things were in the Joker's mind. What do you guys think of that? I know that that's a much better ending, which leads us to know and understand that all these things that we thought happened, the girlfriend, the black lady who was his girlfriend, um, the people he killed, all the things that happened, him being on the talk show, it was all fake. It never really happened except in his very own mind. And the ending that I just gave you clinches that. So anyway, without further ado, let's get to the uh, review uh, on the movie that I didn't see. Here's reasons why I'm not going to see the film. Um, and we've got Matt here. Uh, who says, I am going to see it tonight, yeah. but I have not seen it yet. Right. <clears throat> so we were thinking about doing this um, video for you guys with someone seeing the film versus someone not seeing the film. I decided I wanted to take, take a different angle and I wanted to um, talk about why I'm not going to see it based on what we've seen so far. For one, for me, um, I feel like I've already seen the film because we've been given trailers um, True enough. What once a month for like the last four years is it? Five? Well, it's not just the trailers; it's also like those behind the scenes things. Yeah, behind We've the seen scenes a lot clips. of like leaks in right. quotes. Yeah, like he's in an alley. There's a guy who throws something at him. That's like the first one. Here's one of his several clown outfits. Right, right. Yeah. And then he he walks away. He's like, yeah, whatever. And then he's running from the cops. Then he's in the subway. Then he's and here's another. It's just I don't know. Like every time he does his little laugh thing, sure, he gets punched. It's just kind of weird to me. I don't like that. Whatever. It's just whatever. Um, again, nothing against nothing against Phoenix, right? But I'm just saying that now he's a good actor, but like, where was he like 20 years ago? So now, like I was telling Matt earlier, you could put Brad Pitt in there. You could put Tom Cruise as the Joker. Everyone's talking so highly of Phoenix just because he's got the coveted role of the Joker in this new Joker film. Pretend it was Brad Pitt. Let's just pick a name. Let's just say it was Brad Pitt. I don't think any one of us out there is going to say, oh, man, but only if it was Phoenix playing the Joker. You know? Well, that said, Br uh, Brad Pitt is kind of on fire right now. He's done a couple of movies this year that people are like, oh, he's really good. Right. But, but that's what you mean. Like, yeah. There's a, there's a level. There's a, a certain person, a, a celebrity you could put in that role, and you probably wouldn't be like, where's Joaquin Phoenix? Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. Like... Um, there's someone who would be a great um, Joker, uh, Willem Dafoe. Oh, okay. So going on that, oh, like his face. Yeah, I looks think like Willem Dafoe would have been so much better at the Joker. Now, if Willem Dafoe was the Joker in Joker film, I don't think anyone out there would say, "But what about Phoenix?" Don't think that's going to happen. So now, to Phoenix's defense. Um, no, really, let me just finish really quick. Oh, sorry, sure, sure, go ahead. Anybody who would have been cast for this Joker role would have been put on a pedestal just like Phoenix. That's all I'm saying. I got you. Nothing against Phoenix. I'm just saying. Put him in the of, makeup and then bang. Makeup, clown costume, hey, I'm the Joker and I do Joker film. Oh, he's going to be the best. No, 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 no. It's just unfortunate. Again, nothing against Phoenix. I'm just saying that because of what this is, He's on a pedestal automatically. That's a good point. I hadn't thought of it, but like, in regardless terms of, like, of his performance, he's going to be awesome. Can you pick somebody that was in it that that would that would still suck? I don't know. Like the little kid who was in Star Wars Episode One, worst movie of all time. Oh sure. Put sure. that kid in there. Can you introduce me as Joker? Everyone would go nuts. Macaulay Culkin as <laughs> the Joker. He'd probably be great at it. Frankly, he would like, be. Wow, yeah. wow, wow, wow. Where you, people would be asking, where's Macaulay Culkin in this one? But. Right. So if Macaulay Culkin was a Joker, like, he came out of retirement. He came, <laughs> he came out of nowhere. <laughs> and no one's going to say, what about Phoenix? It's just not going to happen. I got you. Now, Joaquin Phoenix was excellent in The Master, um, and he was excellent in Walk the Line, Johnny Cash uh, biopic. But I will say this. The one movie I can He's think good. of that was a popular movie where he was a villain... I actually didn't care for his villain role, which was uh, Gladiator. 
I like Gladiator, Russell Crowe. He was, uh, I think the villain was Commodus. Anyway, I was like, I don't know, he, he seemed unnecessarily creepy, almost like a mustache twirly kind of right, guy, right, right. where it was like the rest of the people were, anyway, it was just a little odd. But that said, I'm sure this performance is going to be uh, uh, very good. And that's not, not, not the fear I have about this movie. <clears throat> I feel like Joaquin Phoenix will be great. What I'm, what I'm, I'm interested in seeing this movie. I like comic book movies generally. I just have this feeling this movie is going to be unrelentingly grim. Yeah, that's, an, that's my second reason. That's just going to be, which you know, it's just I, like scene after scene. Well, how about now? How about now? Are you depressed yet? How about now? Well, how about now? He loses his job. How about now? He's a failed comic. How about oh, now? Oh, he loses his, his his pills. Oh, how about now? Oh, your mom. I she's in the hospital. She's probably See, we die. know all these things. Anyway, he tried to get a job holding a sign, failed. He, his mom loves him. She gives. He's giving her a bath. He loves her. Tries More to do the anything, stand up thing. Obviously fail. fails. Public humiliation. Mom in the hospital probably dies. Fail. Public humiliation on TV. Fail. It's like I get the point. Okay, I'm not going to be surprised by anything that happens. There's no, a, there's a numbing factor sometimes yeah. where you get it where you get that like chain of just unrelentingly grim events at some point it stops mattering to right. an audience member you're just like oh, let, me, let me guess oh did he whatever did he, his car get stolen uh, yeah no it makes sense right oh no did, uh, did he get a bad haircut uh, yep, yep yep it just keeps going rock bottom it just won't <laughs> stop now you brought up a really good point too if this movie didn't have the name no keep the same film okay same film same film but remove the Joker name, and remove the clown makeup and the clown suit. You could even maybe keep the clown suit. I'm just saying. Oh, okay, you but you're right. The but, clown suit. but maybe just right. It's a, it's the same movie about a guy who a series of horrible events, and then he turns to crime. Down on his luck, just like Wa sorry, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix, just like a which would be a great film, and I would see that film. It would be a film about like, okay. All the waiters and waitresses and everybody struggling in Hollywood, trying to get their scripts read, trying to get the gig, trying going on. We've we've got friends who are trying to get the gigs, trying go on, um, you know, all these uh, uh, cattle call type things, whatever. Yeah, cattle call. I was going to think of a different word, but cattle call sounds better. Um, oh, you didn't get the part. You didn't get the part. You know, everyone's trying to make it, and this would be the perfect film for that because Joaquin Phoenix is awesome. Like, lives with his mom, can't hold down a relationship. Um, can't hold down a job. He's with his mom, the only one person he can go to. He's trying to pay the medical bills. He's got to get the part. He's got to get the part in the lead role of the film. And he's a failed comedian, and nobody wants him. Even keeping the things about where no one's laughing now. You know, ever since I was a little kid. I mean, keep that in there. That's awesome. And then at like the end, maybe one of his friends gets cancer, or he's visiting his mom in the hospital, and the happy ending would be... I always wanted to be a teacher or a comedian to make people laugh. Well, it wasn't meant for show business. Maybe it was meant for the hospital scene. And then he inspires people and they start coming out of cancer. That would be a really good film. But just because it's got the Joker name on it, just like Star Wars. Star Wars now is shit, my opinion. But anyway, you put the, the you just, it could be, you could put the Kardashians in Star Wars. You put Star Wars, everyone's going to want to watch it. And then you're not a true fan if you don't watch it. That's wrong. I would much rather see the Joker film if it wasn't called the Joker and it was just the same film without the makeup and called the Joker. Well, it would be a great film. And you could, I mean, you don't even have to have a happy ending. I don't, right. you know, I think it's its a movie about the, cre the origin of a villain, so it's probably going to have a, you know, a bad ending. But yeah, if it, my point was if you called this movie just whatever, let's say his name isn't Arthur Fleck, if his name, and he's not the Joker, he's just uh, Jerry. Biggington. All right, if you just call the movie Jerry Biggington, and it's the exact same movie, no one would have go. I mean, right. you'd have you'd have right. one tenth the or audience, like, but because you put the name Joker on it, that's right. why everyone's Joke, going. Joke. That's why I'm going. Frankly, I mean, admittedly, that's why I'm going. Okay, so the, yeah, that's a good point. So the biggest the biggest reason for me is it's all marketing. Before the movie was out, you got all these. People, it's the greatest film you're ever going to see. It's destined to make more than Star Wars. It's going to be the biggest thing ever. Really? No one's even seen the damn film yet. But like, we got to see it. We can't left, be left behind. Well, guess what? Months ago, my subscribers were like, well, you didn't see the film? And I'm like, nope. I just don't have any interest because I've seen it already. I've seen enough. 
And people are going to say, well, you haven't seen everything. There's going to be some surprises. Look, at her. Eh, I don't care. Whatever. I'm just, eh, it just doesn't do anything for me. Because, like I said, I've seen it. Too many clips, too many spoilers, too many things. I got you. Too many clips. I just, I feel like, uh, you know, one of the things I do appreciate about comic book movies is everyone's I usually, jumping off the building together. Is what I'm seeing. I usually go for to have fun. You know, mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor, Ragnarok. These are movies where you just you go and you have fun watching it. I don't think this is a fun movie to watch. I'm not saying it's a bad right. movie. I could find out tonight when I go see it. I'm, I might be like, "Wow, that is a really good movie," but I didn't really have a good time. Right. <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm experiencing. And then I asked you before we started filming. Um, so, and I, I was kind of making a joke, but I'm like, let me guess, are they going to have this scene again? Because no. we've never seen it. I wonder if they're going to show a little Batman in it. Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah, in the yeah. Alley I, have, again? I have seen that uh, there is. They have the uh, the, oh, de- the, death of, the death of Bruce uh, Bruce Wayne. That's parents. great. So the whole film, you're you're being you know depressed, and that 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 bitch lady on the train. Would you leave my kid alone? Damn you for making him laugh. What the? Okay, whatever. So he's trying, and he's a good guy. But he's getting slammed by everybody. It's like, what else could we do to screw this guy over? He's trying to make little kids laugh. And it was cute. He's like, you know, he wasn't creepy. He was a good guy. Nope. That doesn't work. Oh, you want a job? Make people laugh? Nope. Everything. Your mom, what, your mom's dying? Then that now at the end, we got to see Batman's family get gunned down? You're not going to walk out of the theater feeling good about yourself. <laughs> you said that. It's the, it's the, the, what, there's a, there's a, Funny little saying in comic book movies is like the two things that can never change the two, the two people that can never survive, you know, in a in a in in a world where everyone comes back, right? You know, oh, Captain America's dead. No, he's fine. Oh, so and so's dead. No, he's fine. The two people that can never come back, Bruce Wayne's dad and Peter Parker's uncle. Those are the guys that just you just constantly see them die and there's a, never any anyway so uh, apparently that's uh, Thomas Wayne we hardly knew ye again again it's um, like I've seen that I don't want to see that again yeah. I mean I get it you're going to title it and it's kind of cool I get it fine but it's like I, I, I just I feel like and, and, and I haven't seen the solo film Star Wars and I won't I saw solo everybody said it was vanilla at best. It was just there. And I feel like this movie is just going to be just there. And in fact, one of our friends, uh, Paul, on your channel, he saw The Joker last night. And he said, mm, do what you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. You know? Well, the difference between this movie and what, well, because I haven't seen this movie yet. I'm about to. But I think, from what I gather, the difference between this and Solo would be that this is a much harder edged movie. That there will right. be, there's going to be some, like. Yeah. Some accelerated violence. Some, it's a it's a dark, much darker movie. I agree that Solo was was a, was a bit meh. I actually was okay with it. It was reasonable, but it wasn't like a four star movie. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. Uh, well, uh, but I did actually. There were time. There were scenes in Solo where I had fun. I'll say that. Whereas I'm, yeah. I'm wondering, and maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe you know what? I'll come back tomorrow and I'll be like, you know what, Steve. Damn it! There were there was this scene where he was he was dancing. in an amusement park and he was having fun and there was a whole group around yeah. him and he did a song and dance with a cane and a top right. hat. Maybe he's on the stairs somewhere <laughs> dancing, jumping on the stairs, you know, having a good time. He had a know. he had a fight with like a robot version of Batman and it was like a really cool. <laughs> he was in a simulation and it was really neat. And it might be. He flashed I, forward and suddenly he had like the whole Justice League and he was like hanging out with them. I don't know, man. I don't think that's going to happen in this, uh, this movie. I'm not bashing this film. Uh, it's just... I just feel like I've seen it already. And the marketing is just too over the top. Like, you got to see it. They might as well say, you're a loser if you don't see it. Everyone's doing it. Everyone's see- it. Is like, it's just... The hype for this film and the marketing was just way too much for me. Well, now, now I, just, I, I would also... I'm going to guess, and you can tell me if I'm wrong... Conformity. It's a thing. I would feel like because you are you are very partial to the Heath Ledger version yeah. of Joker, and so there's probably even a little bit of like a reluctance to be like, oh, somebody else going to try to do the Joker. No, actually not. No? Okay, that's a really good question. Cesar Romero is always going to be my favorite. 
He had the he had the look. He was the guy. The man. iconic look was freaking Caesar he was Romero. The guy. And then Heath is right with Caesar, you know, for just. Um, so no, it has nothing to do with Heath versus whatever. It's just there's no competition, and it's not because I'm like loyal, loyal. It's just if if the Dark Knight never existed, I got you. Probably wouldn't see this movie for the same reasons I just said. Okay, it, we've just been beaten to death with all the just marketing and hype and things and, and like I told you before to be honest I thought the movie was here and gone and then there's another trailer I'm like really I, I thought it was I really thought it launched in like I don't know August or something I'm like, oh it hasn't even come out yet October I feel like we've already seen it whatever well then and the thing is I mean I could be overstating my bounds on this but the thing that was bothering me a little bit was when so Martin Scorsese who was a big backer of this movie. Like, he was the guy who I think kind of originally was like, this is a cool movie idea, and Todd Phillips should do this thing. He came out recently, and he gave a thing about how superhero comic book movies aren't real movies, or they're 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 not cinema. Mm. They're, which is, he totally can have that. Oh. He's totally justified in having that opinion. That's fine. But he's saying that, and on the other hand, he slapped a Joker on this title to get a whole bunch of cash... I don't know he he did this particularly, but in any case, he's supporting this movie, which seems to fly. In the, he's basically saying now this movie is unlike those because hey, it's not it's the Joker, but it's cool. I don't know anybody. It's still it's the Joker. Right. You took a comic book legendary comic book villain and you slapped the name on there and you put the guy in a clown makeup and you're going to make a lot of money for it. For you that ain't kind of bad mouth comic book movies, mm, except this one, it feels weird. Right. It feels like a little hypocritical, but anyway. This movie to me feels like, and you know what, you guys are t entitled to your opinion, it's totally cool, but I'm just saying, this movie to me, and I know I haven't seen it, but this movie to me just feels, um, even though I know it's rated R, it's not dark enough. It just seems too playful. It seems too commercial. It mm. seems, it seems just. If it's playful, well, I'll be excited actually because I don't uh, think it is. I think it it's going to be like. It seems Ugh. too well produced. It seems too polished. It seems too rough, smooth out the edges. It okay. I think to have a good Joker film, it should be along the lines of like the Joker origins, like this. I think it needs to be along the lines of the first Crow film. Okay. Right? All right. Okay. You guys, you know what I'm talking about. If Brandon you know, Lee. Brandon Lee. First, the first Joker film should be on the level of Brandon Lee, or at least this meshed with the feel of the first Crow film with Brandon Lee. No other Crow films exist, by the way. Only the first one. So that's what I'm feeling. All right. Fair enough. Too, too colorful, unless maybe they're going to add it from like a uh, cinematography's point of view where it's like his his life wasn't always the Joker. But even later on, it was just colorful and, I don't know, it it needs to be like The Crow. It needs to be dark, mysterious. Even, even though Jack Nicholson was in it, the first Batman movie, Tim Burton, 1988, that had a darkness to it, a dark night feel. The streets were dark. The alleyways. The city was seedy. The city was city. It was that, that overcast... Gothic. Spraying quality. rain that was always dark, and there's someone in the shadows. This is just too bright. Okay. Too many right. colors, just too many. It needs to be a combination of the crow and this. Okay. It needs to be darker, man. This is just too. You're almost saying that the color palette should be darker. I yeah. mean, not, but just like you're saying. And sinister. And you guys are probably saying, we haven't seen the film. It's going to be sinister. Not the way I'm thinking. It needs to be like. The first Crow movie, Sinister, or, man, something like that. Not this. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Like, the the movie that I was... I'm kind of hoping it's not like this. Uh, although, it, this, is a, this is a good movie, but it's another one of those where it's like, it's unrelentingly grim. It's Seven. So, the movie Seven... Yeah. It's just like this. It's that the city that that's in. It's always raining. Yeah. It's always like there's a there's an unrelenting grimness to it, which works. Yeah. As a, it's almost like right. its own character. Yeah. But after a while, it does weigh on you. Right. Like it's like whoo. Anyway. See, that's what I think they should have done too. That's another great example. Seven. You guys haven't seen that. You got to check that movie out. That will weigh on you more emotionally than seeing the Joker's 
bad fortunes all the time because they're telling you this needs to weigh on you because he's upset but painting that picture with the seven film mm. or the first crow film it just weighs on you because it weighs on you there's a way to do things and just giving us a bunch of examples of how his life is shit isn't gonna do it for me so yeah paint that dark palette misery I got you. Well, I, w I will report back to you, sir, and I'll yeah. let you know. Uh, so anyway, guys, there's more things you can do um, if you want to be brought down, as I told Matt. Um, maybe go to your local funeral parlor, and um, it's free. They got pastries, I'm sure, coffee. And, you know, you. And, but then if you're too upset, I'm sure there's some nice stories to be told about the deceased. Um and it's free. That's that's the takeaway. It's free, man. Instead, you're going to spend twenty dollars. So you're saying instead of like tonight, I could go see the Joker, or I could go to the wake of a stranger. Yeah. Might as well just go to the wake. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. And you're going to get depressed. You know, um, you'll feel the emotions more because someone's going to be crying in the room. You're going to feel that. So if you want to feel something for real, it's free. Um, but no, anyway, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing your take on this, and that's why I wanted to film this with you to see okay. how off it's going to be. But I'm not going to see the film again. Nothing against Phoenix, nothing against. I'm just saying those are my reasons for not wanting to see it. Now Matt's going to see it because I'm going to come back. I'll be like, I was completely wrong. <laughs> it's the best movie ever of all time, not just this year. They they give everyone, you know, you spend like twenty bucks to get in. They give you thirty bucks. Tell all your friends. Tell all your friends. You know, you gotta see this film. <laughs> Citizen Kane, <laughs> <laughs> Joker. <laughs> no, but that's an excellent point that you brought up. Take away the Joker name. Take away the clown thing, and he's just it's a, a miserable it's a, guy. It's, a, it's a probably a struggling actor. It's a it's a well critically received indie film. Is what yeah, it ends up being, yes. right? To be like, oh, oh yeah, well, Kane Phoenix. He, you should think about him at Oscar time right. in that movie no one saw. Right, jo that not Joker, whatever. Right, right. Uh, Jimmy's paradox or whatever it would be. <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> dude, I would totally see that film. That would be a great film, and he'd be perfect for that. Maybe I'll when I, when you can run it. Maybe I will do that <laughs> and edit it. Take out the Joker. Take out the Joker parts and be like, nah, I just don't know. No one wants me. I want to be a teacher, but I can't. You know. And then there's, oh, Jimmy, you'll be fine. Down and out, New York. Right, Whatever. dude. Awesome. So it'll be an indie short. It'll probably be like a 25 minute film, <laughs> but it'll be killer, dude. I would totally see that film. It's just unfortunate because you slap the name on it with the day, and it's a Joker. Whatever. Anyway. I'm sure you guys don't agree with me. That's totally fine. I'm just telling you why is if you would care, I'm not going to see it. Fair enough, sir. You have uh, you have that right. Yeah. Don't forget to check out the video description for a link to Matt's channel, the Dork Lords. Dork Lords. And I'll put a link to the Joker box in case you're interested in seeing um, Heath Ledger, Dark Knight, Joker, and skits. All right. Thanks for filming this. Have fun at your movie. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to go to the wake. You've convinced me now. Oh, yeah? So it's yeah, free, man. Now I'm going to go down the street. Totally it's free. Funeral home. And you can pick. That's true. And plus, like, well, visually, it's, like, right there. It feels like it's 3D because it is. Right. I mean, I mean well, glasses. You are gonna. You can pick your movie theater, too, just like you can pick your wake of choice. And, and the cool thing is you just get right in. I mean, they're not going to ask you. Sometimes they're, like, really need people. Like, come on. Get right. in here. We need to. Hold on a second. How did you know? No, they're not going to do that. Okay. I knew him. We were friends, you know, whatever. Sweet. All right, well. So good video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day, everybody.